I hate intros, One Punch Man, Season 2, Episode 1. We kick things off with Saitama and Genos heading home from the store. They come across the Rank 7 S-Class hero, King, who is confronted by a robot called G4, wanting to fight him to assess his strength. G4 is a good sport, so he lets King go to the bathroom first, and we learn that King actually doesn't have any powers, he just so happened to be around monsters right before they were slain. People thought he was the one responsible, and this happened enough times to where he made S-Class. Knowing that he can't fight the monster, he decides to flee from the fight, and Genos has to step in to fight G4 instead. King is an otaku, so he returns to his house to play some video games when Saitama shows up because he had followed him. He had followed him to find out why he was running from the fight, but the two end up playing games until a huge bird monster attacks his apartment. He is then forced to confess to Saitama that he doesn't have any powers, and he recognizes that whenever he ran into a monster, Saitama was actually the one who killed it. To his surprise, Saitama is even mad, and he says that he wants to hang out again sometime. Back to Genos, who managed to defeat G4 and brought back some of the parts in order to use them to upgrade his body. We then hop on over to the president of the Hero Association, who is trying to hire villains to help with the increasing amount of monster attacks that have been happening. Speedo Sound Sonic is there, but he's just looking for Saitama so he can get a rematch. Once he realizes he's not there, though, he decides to leave. E episode 2. We get a new face in Garo, who interrupts the meeting and claims that he is a monster, declaring every human as his enemy. He attacks and defeats all of the villains there, as well as three A-class heroes that were there as security. Later on, we hop on over to Saitama, who's hanging out when Genos senses someone coming. Saitama's pretty distracted with his game, so Genos goes to check it out alone, and he finds Speedo Sound Sonic outside looking for Saitama to get his rematch. 20 minutes later, there's a knock at the door, and when Saitama answers it, we meet the Rank 1 Class B hero Fubuki, or Hellish Blizzard. She is there to convince Saitama to join her faction in Rank B because he won't be able to climb through the ranks without her help. That's a kick fucking W, so he declines her, prompting her and her posse to try and attack him. Obviously, this doesn't go quite as planned, and he makes quick work of him. He then sees Genos fighting with Sonic, who is keeping up with his speed relatively well thanks to his new upgrades. Genos prepares to unleash a huge blast, so Saitama steps in and takes him out of the fight because he was about to level the neighborhood. Sonic finally gets his chance to fight Saitama, but immediately loses without landing a single blow. Fubuki is shocked by Saitama's power like everybody else, and later on while talking, we learn that she's actually the younger sister of Tatsumaki, the rank 2 S-class hero. She explains that she can't be as strong as her older sister, so she made her faction to compensate for that. When asked why she doesn't shoot for rank 1 in class A, she explains that a Mai Mask is too strong, and even disciples of Atomic Samurai can't beat him to get into S-Class. Jump on over to the Hero Association for a quick scene where we see that they give the hero names Demon Cyborg to Genos and Caped Baldy to Saitama. They don't seem too concerned about Garo's recent attack because they've tasked S-Class heroes with handling him. Meanwhile, we see Garo looking for strong heroes to fight, and he defeats Tank Top Vegetarian in the last scene. E episode 3. We get a look at Silverfang beating one of his pupils named Tronco down and expelling him from his dojo. Tronco goes to talk about it with Saitama and Genos where he finds the other heroes there as well. They speculate that he might have kicked him out because of the reappearance of Garo, who is Silverfang's former student. Silver Fang is trying to protect Chironko from getting caught up in the fight because Garo is very dangerous. Later on, Chironko is walking home at night and comes across Garo who attacked the Class C Rank 1 hero, Mewman Rider. Soon after, the Tank Top Squad shows up looking for Garo since he attacked the Tank Top Vegetarian. <laughs> Goro finds his first challenge against an S-Class hero while fighting Tank Top Master. Tank Top Master thinks he has the upper hand because Garo wasn't going all out, but once he does, he makes quick work of him and his squad. Drunko's watching from the sidelines, but then decides it's time to sack up, and so he goes to fight Garo, getting one-tapped immediately. Knowing how dangerous Garo is, Silver Fang calls in his brother Bomb to help in the fight, and they're the ones who come across the beaten down boys. Saitama goes to visit all the heroes in the hospital where he learns more about Garo's martial arts. Hop back on over to Garo, who meets a boy named Tario, reading a hero almanac that describes all of the heroes and their moves. The almanac gives Garo enough information for him to plot his next attack. Back. He goes after the Class A hero, Golden Ball, and during their fight, he is joined by Spring Mustachio to help him out. Even though the duo managed to deal some damage to Garo, they are both ultimately defeated. 
Back over to Saitama, who is curious about martial arts, so Chiranko gives him a ticket to a martial arts tournament that he can go watch. Chiranko was supposed to compete in the tournament, so Saitama gets the idea to go in his place, but it would be against the rules, so he goes to buy a wig for a disguise. While out shopping for a wig, he comes across Garo, who attacks him, so Saitama gives him a good smack and knocks him unconscious in the last scene. Episode 4. We get a short flashback to when Garo was young. He would always root for the monsters to win in TV shows, but they were always beaten by the heroes. He felt bad that the monsters were trying their best also, but could never seem to win, so he decides that he'll become the strongest monster and will never lose. Regaining consciousness, Garo can't remember Saitama or what happened to him. Garo is reading his book again, so Garo uses it to target Metal Bat and Watchdog Man next. We then see Saitama, who signs up for the tournament under Chiranko's name. He then meets another one of Bang's former students named Sourface. Sourface explains that last tournament's winner was Wolfman, but then they found Wolfman later on tied up, so the real winner was actually Garo in disguise. This is why contestants are now prohibited from using aliases or disguises. We also learned that it was six months ago when Garo decided that he had nothing more to learn and attacked all of the students at Bang's dojo. Bang fought and defeated him while also banishing him from the dojo, which is also when Sourface quit. The Hero Association wants to protect its officials from the increasing amount of monster attacks. Metal Bat is assigned to look after one of the top sponsors of the Hero Association, Narinki. He's also supposed to protect Narinki's son, Waganma, but then they are attacked soon after by Junior Centipede and Venus Mantrap. After making quick work of them, they are attacked again, but this time by Senior Centipede and Raffle Satan, who tries to knock him out with sleeping gas. He manages to counteract the gas and kills both of them as well, queuing the entrance of the final boss. A dragon level monster named Elder Centipede targets non Rinky, so him and his son are taken by some lower level heroes to safety while Metal Bat holds him off. While fighting Elder Centipede, he is then targeted by Garo, forcing him to focus on that fight instead. Episode 5 Metal Knight is the next hero on the scene to fight Elder Centipede, but he can't seem to do any damage to it. Back on over to Garo, who had seemingly defeated Metal Bat, but points out that if he managed to land one shot on him, then he would have been in trouble. Metal Bat actually wasn't out of the fight just yet, and launches another attack, catching Garo off guard, and nearly kills him, but he is stopped by his little sister, Zenko. Zenko requests that they both stop fighting, and Garo agrees because he kind of has a soft spot for kids, so he goes to look for Watchdog Man instead. Two monsters named Phoenix Man and Sludge Jellyfish approach Garo to get him to join the monster. Monsters Association, but he refuses. All of the monsters make their retreat with Metal Knight tagging along on Elder Centipede. Bang gets into his first scrap with a demon level monster called Boxing Demon, which he kills pretty quickly with a barrage of punches. There are numerous other monsters who start attacking the city as well. Do S, who is my personal favorite monster, uses her whips to mind control people and is attacking heroes when Fubuki steps in to stop her. Back on over to the tournament where we meet too many side characters for me to care about listing, but we also meet Bakuzan and Sui Ryu, who are both supposed to be extremely strong. In his first match, Saitama goes against Zakos, who was talking some crazy shit to him earlier, and in the last scene after the credits, we see him lose in one hit. Episode 6. We see the hero Lightning Max faced up against Sui Ryu, who quickly defeats him. Meanwhile, Genos, who is at the tournament watching, gets a message saying that there are a lot of monster attacks happening around the city, so he goes to fight the ones nearby. Sourface manages to beat his opponent, Jakuman, in their first fight. Saitama's second match is against Bakuzan, who had won the tournament two times before that, but still gets knocked out in one punch. Over to Genos, who goes around slaying multiple monsters until he meets a demon-level monster, Awakened Cockroach. He uses adhesives to keep him in place, but Cockroach Boy sacrifices his legs in order to make his retreat. While Genesis' back is turned, he is attacked by a mysterious monster. We also learn that Waganma was captured, but his dad wasn't. There's a lot of fights going on as we hop back on over to Do S, who had taken control of all of Fubuki's men. She attacks Fubuki also, but her will prevents her from succumbing to the mind control, and she also says that when she takes damage, her sister knows about it. This cues the entrance of her big sister, Tatsumaki, so Do S wants no part of that fight and uses her henchmen to buy her time to escape. 
After the credits, Garo sees Watchdog Man, Saitama is in the bathroom, and a dragon level monster named Koketsu is revealed to be the one who approached and defeated Genos. There's also a My Masks concert that is attacked by monsters, a group of monsters are attacking a hospital where a human rider and tank top master are at. A monster named Nyan is looking for Putty Putty Prisoner, but the prisoners reveal that Putty Putty Prisoner escaped the prison to fight against the monsters. And finally, two monsters named Giro Giro and Orochi have captured Metal Knight. Episode 7. With so many monsters showing up, the S Class heroes finally respond to fight with them. Child Emperor, the rank 5 S Class hero, uses his robot to fight against Eyesight. She finds where he's controlling the robot from, but then she's eaten by the rank 10 S-Class hero, Pig God. We see Garo, who's about to go in on Watchdog, the S-Class rank 12 hero, but then he's suddenly attacked by another monster. Drive Knight, the rank 9 S-Class hero, wins his fight and then tries to interrogate the monster to get information. Death Gatling, the A-Class rank A hero, goes to fight 100 Eyes Octopus, but is told to stand down by Flashy Flash, rank 13 S-Class hero. He fights with the monster, and then Tatsumaki steps in to chaos him and takes out the monster. A My Mask, Mewman Rider, and Tank Top Master all manage to defeat the monsters that had targeted them. Now hop on over to Atomic Samurai who meets with his council of swordsmen. One of the swordsmen named Ragari brought monster cells to them in hopes that they'll join the monster association. He explains that if they eat the monster cells, they'll turn into a powerful monster with even more power than they have now. When declined, he turns into a monster and Atomic Samurai is forced to kill him before setting out to find the Monsters Association. At the tournament, Saitama faces against Sourface and Chose, quickly beating both of them as well. This progresses him to the finals where he faces against Sui Ryu. Long story short, they both won a challenging fight and when Saitama gets his wig knocked off, he's disqualified from the tournament. This doesn't stop Sui Ryu and he continues to attack him even though his attacks don't really do any damage. Once Saitama feels like he understands a little bit more about martial arts, he gives him a solid hip bump, throwing him into a wall and ending the fight. In the last scene, we see that the monster who defeated Genos is headed towards the tournament. Episode 8. Sui Ryu is awarded for winning the tournament since Saitama was disqualified. The monster Goketsu shows up and we learn that he used to be a human martial artist like the contestants. He was defeated by the monsters and eventually ended up joining them in order to become more powerful. Presenting the contestants with monster cells, he gives them the ultimatum of joining the monster association or dying. Jose and a handful of other fighters eat the cells in order to become stronger. Sui Ryu is the only one who stands up to them and manages to defeat the new monsters, including Chose. He goes to fight Goketsu next, but soon realizes that he's way too strong for him, getting beaten pretty bad. Bakuzan is off to the side watching this, and Sui Ryu begs him for his help, but he refuses and ends up eating three of the monster cells at once. The strain is too much on his body, and he ends up passing out. Goketsu orders his crow minions to finish the job when Lightning Max and Snek show up in their hero gear to help fight back. They manage to defeat the crows, but when Sui Ryu tries to run from Goketsu, he gets cut off by Bakuzan, who has had successfully turned into a monster and starts beating him up. Goketsu gets a message from Goro who tells him to fall back because S-Class heroes will be showing up soon. He warns Bakuzan of this before leaving him behind with Sui Ryu because Bakuzan wants to continue toying with him. Sui Ryu admits defeat and pleads with Bakuzan to spare him, but Bakuzan has no interest in that and wants to kill him. In a last ditch effort, Sui Ryu cries out hoping that a hero might hear him. This cues the entrance of Saitama in the last scene. Episode 9. Nine. Saitama is trying to figure out where he knows Bakuzan from since he had just fought him as a human, but then he goes to attack Saitama and he is killed. Sui Ryu asks who Saitama really is and he explains that he's actually a hero that joined the tournament to learn more about martial arts and because he was bored. After learning that Koketsu is the one who defeated Sui Ryu and how strong he is, Saitama goes looking for him. Sui Ryu begs him not to go, fearing that he'll be killed, but after a few moments, Koketsu's head lands in front of him after Saitama had killed him. Once Sui Ryu has had seen his strength, he decides that he wants to become a hero, and he also wants to become Saitama's disciple. Jump on over to Putty Putty Prisoner, who defeats the demon level free hugger by hugging him to death. He then gets a call saying that the inmates in his prison were taken hostage by the monsters. While walking back, Saitama reflects on the fact that he is still too strong and ultimately just bored because he can't find a worthy opponent. He runs into King, who drops a lot of useful wisdom on him that he had learned from a manga, but none of it really sticks, so the two of them go to play games instead. 
Garo had lost to Watchdog Man due to his unorthodox fighting style and is amped up that he still has so much to learn. When he sees King and Saitama walking, he gets pumped up for another fight with an S-Class hero. He rushes at King to attack him, but Saitama kicks him through a wall, knocking him unconscious again. Over to Sonic, who is training when he is approached by ninjas named Gale Wind and Hellfire Flame, who turn out to be monsters working with the association. They give him monster cells in hopes that he will join their side. He agrees, but makes the mistake of cooking the monster cells, which ends up preventing the transformation and gives him diarrhea instead. S-Class Rank A Zombie Man is tracking Marshall Gorilla, who runs into Armored Gorilla from Season 1. Marshall Gorilla picks a fight with Armored Gorilla, who was just out getting groceries, so Armored Gorilla knocks him out. This makes Zombie Man want to follow Armored Gorilla instead. In the last scene, the Hero Association gets a message from the Monster Association. Episode 10. Gero Gero and Destro Claridium take over the body of one of the executives and negotiate with the Hero Association. They declare war and challenge the Hero Association to send their best heroes to fight them in an all-out battle using the captured Waganma as leverage. Destro Claridium then prepares to open fire on the other executives, but is stopped by Super Alloy Darkshine, which is the S-Class Rank 11 hero before he can. We then look at a meeting in the Monster Association, where Monster King Orochi brings everyone up to speed on what their plan is. He then realizes that Awakened Cockroach is there and eats him because of him losing to Genos. Who then think about killing Do S also, but let's be realistic. When you know that your fan base is a bunch of lonely nerds like me, you're not gonna kill off that character. Goro Goro finds Goketsu's body after he didn't show up for the meeting. This is a pretty good indicator that they might have underestimated the heroes. Goro regains consciousness after Saitama had kicked him through the wall and sees Death Gatling, an A-class hero, but can't fight him because of his injuries, so he retreats to heal up in a shack. The shack just so happens to be where Tario and his friends hang out, and they make Tario go to get rid of him. Well, while they're talking, Death Gatling and seven other heroes surround the place to capture Garo. In his current condition, he's having a hard time keeping up with the barrage of attacks, even being hit by two poison arrows in the fight. Episode 11. Garo points out that there are no S-Class heroes, so he's confused as to why they think they can defeat him. Death Gatling goes on to explain that the Hero Association only cares about S-Class heroes, so he assembled a team of lower-ranking members to prove that they're useful too. Garo then starts to turn the tables on the heroes, taking down half of them. While Death Gatling tries to get a shot off on Garo, he gets close to Glasses, and we get a flashback of him being in Fubuki's little clan and was holding them back. Then Saitama saves him from a monster and encourages him to keep trying, which was nice and all, but Garo still kicks the shit out of him. Now it's just Death Gatling left, and with no human shields, he can use his finisher move on Garo. Goro asks him not to because Tario is still in the shed and could be in the line of fire, but Death Gatling thinks this is a bluff. He uses Death Shower, firing all of his bullets off at once. In order to protect Tario, Garo goes on to block all of the bullets and then proceeds to defeat Death Gatling now that he's out of bullets. When Tario comes out, he no longer sees Garo as a friendly man, he sees him as a monster and so he runs away in terror. Glasses had managed to send out a signal for help, so without any time to rest, Genos shows up to fight Garo. Saitama and King get the signal also, and Saitama thinks back on all of the times that Genos was injured in his fights, so they decide to go make sure everything is okay. Genos has the upper hand in the fight, so Garo tries emulating Watchdog Man's moves to fight back. Eventually, he is cornered, but then monsters from the Monsters Association step in to save him and recruit him into their ranks. Bang and Bomb show up to help in the fight, with Bomb taking on the monsters, allowing Bang to focus on the fight with his former pupil. Episode 12. Goro is outclassed and losing to Bang and Bomb, so he starts having more flashbacks of when he was a kid. Another reason he hates heroes so much is because a popular kid in his class named Tatchan always used to gang up on him with his friends and beat him up. This was part of a game they played where he was the monster and they were all of the heroes ganging up on him to beat him. Then whenever they got in trouble for fighting, they would always blame it on him. He just sees heroes as people picking on the weak, in this case monsters. As he gets ready to make his last stand against the heroes, Phoenix Man swoops in and carries him off while knocking the others back. Genos launches an attack at them as they're fleeing, but the Elder Centipede returns to block the shot. Bang and Bomb launch a powerful attack against Elder Centipede, but even that isn't enough, only causing it to shed its armor. Genos decides to fight it in order to buy time for the others to get the Class A heroes to safety, but after throwing everything he has at it, he still can't do damage. As it starts nearing the city, King shows up with a megaphone to antagonize Elder Centipede, saying that the Class S Rank 1 hero Blast was there to fight it. 
Blast was the hero that fought Elder Centipede a while back and injured it so badly that it had to retreat underground. Seeking vengeance against Blast, Centipede Boy starts charging towards King's voice. Once it closes in on King, Saitama launches a surprise attack to kill the centipede with one hit. In the last scene after the credits, we see that Garo had fallen unconscious as Phoenix Man takes him to meet with the King of Monsters, Orochi. I'm going to be doing the future seasons, and you can find that on the left side whenever I'm finished with it, or you can check out all of the One Punch Man recaps in the playlist on the right side. You can also find the links in the description below, and the only thing I hate more than intros is outros.